manager at a company called PPI Media. Um, this is my contact details. Um, yeah, so I'm a Drupal first timer. So it's my first DrupalCon. I'm very happy to be here and enjoy all the good mood and all the nice people here. And so not only I am personally new to Drupal, but um, my company PPI is new to Drupal as well. So we started about at the beginning of this year thinking about um, connecting to open source. So before I will go on with the presentation, I would like to talk a little bit of where PPI comes from and what PPI is. So PPI is a 35 year old company and we have come from the publishing sector and we have a lot of customers out there and we are mainly based in the newspaper and magazine publishing area. So we have a digital production line to automate all the processes in newspaper planning and production, which means we start from connecting to the good old presses, to the pre-press processes, we connect to um, ad systems and things like this. So this is our foundation and we used to be an open and a closed source company for all these years. So now we try and work to get some open source DNA into our structures and one part of our solution package is a smart editorial system that we use right now and as even our customers see that there's a need for digital transformation because they see that they want to create inspirational content for both digital and print. They talk about storytelling, they talk about the early story, <coughs> early story starting on a mobile just with a push and then developing the story of a day and in the end in the evening they want to decide okay should part of it be become part of our print or not. So they want to have a multiple use of content. They need, because they, they uh, have a cost pressure on them, lean production processes for both print and online. And in the end, when we talk to them, so what would you wish to have? So they say, okay, so we need one system to fill all, challenge, uh, all channels. So one system for all for digital and print. So this is our task. So we have an existing publishing tool and now we thought, okay, what could be this one system that our customers want to use to create and store all the content, have their content pool in it, and we think that the web CMS should be the right address for this one because this deserves all the digital needs that our customers have. And so our idea is to provide a lean and simple user-friendly workflow to connect our existing publishing workflow directly to a web CMS. So this is the task that we started with. And when you search the landscape of web CMS systems, you all know that there are tons out there. But one system you will run into when you think about publishing and publishes for sure is the Thunder initiative. I don't know if everybody knows about Thunder, I think so. So it's a, a Drupal distribution from Borda in Munich. And yeah, so we, we ran into them and we yeah we really like felt into open arms. So I would like to use this chance to give a real big thank you to the Thunder team because we got a lot of support and learned a lot from them, not only in a technical way, but from their approach to have a culture of sharing and cooperation. We are working on to become part of the Thunder community, especially in the last circle down there to become an industry partner and see where we can just contribute to this project and by contributing to this project, contribute to Drupal and to this beautiful community. Okay, so we decided, okay, let's go open source. Let's use Thunder as a starting point. And now, so that's the, <coughs> the situation. You know all this. I don't have to talk about that. There is uh, there is the web CMS, which is the central content hub for all 
the different kinds of context text images, videos, and whatever, and you're all pretty good in serving the digital channels. So you're doing amazing stuff, and I heard a lot of very interesting talks about what you do. And so as we are a media company, we are not a digital agency, we are not a web agency, so we are really a software company. And um, so all these new channels, they are not on our list. So, and this is why we decided to do what we can, what we used to. So we're very good in print and we're pretty good in integrating. So we have a lot of APIs in our portfolio with our other workflows. And when we have a look at the web CMS and how a web CMS is linked to print and InDesign especially. So we talked to some agencies and uh, some of them, they, yeah, they just use copy and paste from web CMS to InDesign and um, have a lot of pain with this. Files are often stored in the, in the file system or on somebody's computer and there is no really uh, centralized file storage. I've heard a beautiful talk about PDF generators where I can create amazing PDFs from Drupal with a lot of scripting and CSS and stuff like this. Um, and also in this talk I learned that there, whatever tool you use, there are some limitations in what these tools can get and that the quality of PDF in most cases comes near to what the customer wants in the end. And what we always <coughs> as well see is that some planning tools are missing. So yeah, you can go for the big vendors. I don't want to name them here, which provide a real big fat editorial system, but for some cases these might be overpowered. So when we investigated these interfaces, um, we figured out that there are more publishers out there than just newspapers and magazines. So there are corporate publishers, there are NGOs, governmental organizations, um, and everybody who's producing some printed or PDF content is, in this sense of the meaning, a publisher. And by providing our solution, we think that um, these yeah, not media houses can use a professional and good implemented um, publishing workflow as well. So what did we do? We created a JSON API that connects to Drupal's JSON API to directly read the content from the web CMS and transfer it into InDesign documents. So our entire workflow is InDesign based. And using this approach, connecting to our planning tool, which I will show in a minute, we see that any kinds of publications can be produced with this workflow. And we have a focus on a user-friendly and non-technical workflow. So there's no scripting, there's some configuration, but most of the configuration is done directly in the InDesign documents because the way the layout creates an InDesign document defines how the content will be formatted in InDesign. I provided, um, provided three demo spots. And the first is about web to print, almost without any design. And I will explain in a second why this is almost without any design. Okay. So what we see here is a uh, Thunder page. And this is an article about hiking in Norway, so it's in German. I'm Sorry about that. But you see that there are some formats in there, like headline two. There are pictures. Pictures have captions and stuff like this. What we see now on the screen is our web-based planning tool, where we, lay, where we um, do <coughs> create, where we create the publications. You can store them there. You can copy and stuff like this. So the foundation is to use InDesign documents that are pre-formatted in a special way. And these are uploaded to the server and can be loaded from the web UI to the pages 
to define how these pages should be formatted. When I assign a template document, you see that there is a predefined layout on there. There are some pictures and there's, there are um, text frames where the body text should go to. So now how do I place my content from the web CMS on these documents? So the easiest way is to go to Thunder, to the content overview, and drag and drop the article and drop it on the page. So the system sees that there is an article already prepared and it's placed in the background. So the magic in the background is done by an InDesign server. And you see that's not only a copy and paste approach. So we see that there, are, there is the caption of the image or the formatting information from the web CMS is directly transferred into InDesign formats. So this is only very basic formatting. So when you're app designers that are pretty good in InDesign, you can use grab styles and tons of automated formatting options in InDesign to lay out the text automatically when it comes into the InDesign document. So now when we have a look at the article in the web CMS, we integrated a preview of the layout of the article in InDesign that you can see inside Web CMS how the placed article looks like on your InDesign documents. Okay, now you see hmm, in the headline there could be maybe some more words, it could be more interesting. So what to do about it? You go to your story in the Web CMS and just change it. You apply the changes. And the article is updated automatically. Which means it could be a way how we can simplify correction workflows with customers by giving them access to the article in the web CMS. And you see that as well, the update in the page dummy is updated as well. Okay, so that's the first workflow, which is uh, quite automated, and this is uh, because our customers, um, they really love automation. So, and this is why we have this template-based approach, because when we analyze a newspaper where we come from or a magazine. Um, together with our customers, we always figure out that about 60% of the pages are more or less the same concerning the layout. Even though when we start the discovery, they always say, no, this is everything very special. In the end, they say, okay, the overall layout of the pages is more or less the same. And this is why this automation in this case really offers them uh, and it saves them a lot of work and then so they can focus on the special pages where the, the layouters have the time to really do pretty good jobs on very special pages. So once again, just to point it out, that we not only copy and paste the content, so the images are placed into image frames and the caption is transferred together with the image. And any kind of uh, formatting options in the web CMS are transferred into the InDesign documents and converted into InDesign format information. Okay, so this was a very automated process. So when we talk to, um, to layouters, um, 
who like to do their InDesign documents uh, step by step and uh, want to be creative in the layout, they say, okay, this is a far too automated to what we need. So we would like to have the content in our InDesign documents and then have it there and lay out and do something else. So, and this is shown in the next example. Here we will use an InDesign client plugin to connect my InDesign client directly to the web CMS in the same way. So again, we start in Thunder. There's an article about the Tower of London. And when I click again, it will start. And this article, I want to load this one into an InDesign document. So in this case, we again start in the web UI, but we can start in, a, in the InDesign client directly as well, just by loading a document. And in this case, I have to tick the option that I will open my document in my InDesign client. So here you see the structure, and this is provided by our InDesign plugin. We create something that we call a content group, and this content group is nothing else but a defined number of InDesign text and image frames. So you see when I click on one, everything that belongs to this specific group, to this specific article is highlighted. And this uh, plugin provides a content search option. When I search for the London article, it performs a search in Drupal, shows me the article with its components. And I see that there's an image as well. And now we can just drag and drop the article onto my InDesign page. Places the image, caption is placed, and formatting rules are applied. So when I save the document, we will create a preview which is shown in the page dummy, as well as in the web CMS. So now I jump as well very quick, but I'm now back in InDesign, in my InDesign client. Now those, oh sorry, this has been the preview. And now we will jump to, so now we are in the InDesign client, and now we change the article in InDesign. It's not the Tower of London, in this case it's the Tower in London. The system indicates that there are changes to the document which have not been transferred to the web CMS original. And this update of the web CMS can be cut off, which means that we just have a print variant and we don't want to update the online original version. We can, or we can automate it or we can make it a manual process, as we did here. So I hit this little pen. So now the blue dots show me that both documents are in sync, which means InDesign and web is on the same level. And when I refresh my article, in Sunder you see that now the Sunder story is updated. So if you have a look on the top, there is a new card which is called Create Print Variant. Um, because we are pretty much sure that you will never use your online stories one by one um, to have it in print. So we used an existing plugin called Create Variant and enhanced it in a way that when we use an online story and we create a print variant of it, we will remove all the online specific content, like image galleries, videos that are embedded and stuff like this. So we will prepare the copy of the story for being published in an InDesign document. <coughs> okay. So now, the last workflow example I would like to show you is just called Layout First. Because we know it from our customers, um, they like to work with freelancers, for instance, and but they want to give them a 
limited amount of space in the magazine, in the newspaper, or something like this. So in this workflow, we will start in InDesign. And from an InDesign article, we will create a corresponding article in Sunder. So again, I have to pick it a second time. Same starting point. So the headline of the article will be the name of the article in Drupal. So I just give some names that I will recognize. So this is page seven top, page seven left, and the last one is page seven right. So now our tool offers the option to create these articles in the web CMS. So I have to do this three times because there are three articles. Save the document in InDesign. Now we go back into Thunder or Drupal in the content overview. And we see that the three articles are created here. And I open to edit it. You see that we have an image paragraph, that we have body text. The title is taken from the original article in InDesign. And on the right hand side again I see the preview. So working with freelancers or somebody else or if you just want to set the rules for your editors, this could be a useful workflow. And believe it or not we often often get the question, so I have an InDesign document and I want to import this into Drupal or into, into the web CMS. And the workflow that I've shown you can be used for exactly this use case because when we uh, create the article from InDesign in the web CMS, we will transfer all the content of the article into the web CMS as well. So, and this can be used for this from my point of view, a little strange kind of workflow, but I learned that SPH is doing it right now, and they are pretty happy in uh, transferring their content from Hermes into, into Drupal. And yeah, and if you'd like to do this, um, so the option would be there. Okay, so these have been the three demo workflows, and yeah, so this, uh, Approach works with a native Drupal, and we have the highest integration with Thunder at the moment, but we try to keep the other interfaces on track as well. And we have the same integration with WordPress as well. So what we do, we think are the benefits. So we see that there are no limitations in PDF options because we use the full range of PDF options that InDesign offers, and yeah, so there are no limitations. And what we think from a customer's perspective or from the client's perspective, whenever they do add changes to their layout, when they change their CI settings, when they change styles, when they change fonts or whatever, they can just do it by themselves in the InDesign documents. And if they are clever, they organize their InDesign documents as an InDesign box. I only have to change all the settings in the InDesign book and it will be applied to all the inlying documents and then we have to update the templates on our system and all the CI changes, everything is then used from that point on and the clients can do this by themselves in a tool that they know. So there's no scripting, there's no CSS style sheets involved, things like this. So it's a real straightforward which enables the client to um, control the layout of their documents by themselves. 
So we've seen that we offer different workflow options with this tool. That there is an easy and direct exchange between online and print. That we have full text search options in the InDesign client and in the web UI as well. So I haven't shown this in the workflow, but in the web UI there is a search option integrated as well that I can do it from the web. And we see that there's a big option to simplify correction and co-working workflows because we have this centralized storage of the documents on our server and everybody can access the documents from any place in the world. So wherever he is, he can just go to the page and open the InDesign document from the server instance. So what we are working on <coughs> right now, I, and I hope that I could have shown you something uh, in another video, but as you know, it, things are not always ready in time, so sorry for that. Um, what we work on right now is the support of custom paragraphs and blocks and header elements. So we see that, in, especially in magazines, there are some kinds of a, like a subheadline or there's an, an author box or a short sort message box or some, some special text elements. And what you just can do is, in, in Sunday, you can create uh, new paragraph types. And the only thing that <coughs> limits is that they have to have the field type text, any kind of the text field types in them. And the next time, so when you create them in Sunder and we restart our server, these uh, new paragraph types will be recognized automatically by the system and can just be used without a lot of um, administration work in the background. Another topic um, that we learned when we talked uh, to agencies that are doing financial reports for, for their um, customers is that the import of tables, Excel tables, from the web CMS into InDesign documents is a real hard topic together with the import of Word documents in general, because in this uh, case, um, the customer receives all the original text from their customers as a Word in Excel, and they spend tons of time by copy and paste Word into InDesign documents, and with the next update, they just lose all the layout work that they put into the InDesign documents at this point. So, and we've shown them this approach, and they said, okay, this looks pretty good. So just import the Word documents into the web CMS and then go on to InDesign. Uh, can you do this for tables? We said, hmm, we have to think about it. And this is what we are in at the moment, and tables are a little challenging at this point. And because we uh, have good context to the Arabic world, we are working on the full support of Arabic publications, so right to left. And my favorite slide, at the end is a uh, Arabic standard version that we use then whenever I get some questions about configuration I have to have an English version on the other screen that I can just get along with this right to left Sunday. Okay, so this is the end of my session. So thank you uh, everybody for being around and yeah, I'm happy about your feedback. Uh, any questions? Yeah. How can we get? To, can, can we test this module or? Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, so right now, as uh, we are just, as I said, we started at the beginning of this year, so um, it's not available in any kind of marketplace. But you, if, if you're interested, I can give you my business card, and we can talk about giving you a, a demo access for a limited time, just to check out and see. So. Could you export all the pages uh, you've, uh, to one uh, InDesign file? If you, if you create the pages, yeah. could you bundle that to one InDesign file which can go to a uh, to a printer? Yeah, so actually look, what we do is, um, yeah, so it, it depends on how you set up your, your uh, template document. If it's just one document, then uh, everything is just in one InDesign file. If you want to send PDFs, or if you want to send it to the printer, in, in the tool, there's PDF generation workflow already included. 
because uh, we used to create high quality PDFs as yeah from from our foundations that uh, we know how PDFs have to be we want to send to the panel. So this would just come along with the web UI where we can where we have certain several PDF profiles that we can use and, and we can make we are really producing PDFs that we can send to the panel. Yeah, sure. if, yeah. question, uh, if you have, uh, uh, say, uh, products of a certain uh, product family, is it, uh, is it possible to uh, add those? If you say, I want to generate one PDF file with products of one family. Say, uh, one product category, you have cars from a certain brand, and you want to uh, create one PDF file with only cars from that brand. Is that so right now, it's not, because, so it's in the web UI, then every publication is, is a single entity. So right now we can just uh, create PDFs per publication. But there are good options that, in this case, if you have like five publications for your company, you can use a filter, you have them all on screen, and then you can produce PDFs for publications. Are the images embedded in the yeah. <coughs> so they're embedded, they're not, say, separate yeah. or uploaded in a... Yeah, so image replacement, yeah. Okay, so it's an embed yes. inside the InDesign file. Um, okay. It's not yeah. linked outside of the file, but it's, yeah, yeah. it's inside. Yeah, it's inside. Yeah. So it makes the InDesign file very heavy, you know? Yeah, so this is a question about how we set up the workflow. So we, we can use this, we can work with low-res images during the layout process and when we create the people as we can just replace the lowest by the higher explosions. Um, can you elaborate um, about the different interfaces between uh, Drupal or Thunder and um, InSign server? So the web UI, which technology do you use for this? It's React. Mm -hmm. So and uh, so it's for, for the web UI you <coughs> we use React. So I'm not a technician. Yeah. I'm a product manager. So uh, is it, is it uh, a re React interface for Drupal or Thunder, or is it a different technology built? Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's outside. Okay. Yeah, so this is um, our closed source, closed source. Okay. component. Um, yeah. And uh, um, the InDesign plugin you use, is it also closed source, and uh, is it um, uh, a component of the yeah. Web UI? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so you know, the, it's not necessary, so the InDesign plugins can be used without the Web UI. So you don't, you don't need the, um, the web UI, you can work with the plugin and mm -hmm. just just Thunder and the plugin yeah. can communicate. Yeah. And, and so more or less, so there's a server component in the background, mm -hmm. but um, this is not very fast, would not be very fast. The plugin in which language is written and how complicated or how much time you've spent on it and stuff. Is it by Adobe to do so, or can you just download the API and start programming the plugin for InDesign? So, on the InDesign plugin, we've been working for, I don't know, 15 years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, we are, we are Adobe Silver Partner okay. on the company level, and yeah, so we have full support of the okay. Adobe Silver. As I mentioned, so there Part of our of the component is an InDesign server, so we, we run and host a multi-instance InDesign server, and potential customers will just get an instance or two, depending on how much traffic they have on this uh, InDesign server, which will remarkably reduce the costs for having an InDesign server in your environment. Yeah. So when the Setup that we've seen here in the demo um, would be, uh, I think, about 1,000 euros a month uh, with a given number of users. So, usually, we 
that we can take users into this package and if the additional users we can just add some So we, yeah, we, we see that uh, the solution actually should be below the prices of other competitors. And one uh, benefit that we see is that when you go for a real uh, editorial system, you have to pay all the seats that you have in the editorial system. And you have like 500 editors working. You have to pay a lot of money for the seats for the editorial system. And in this approach, using an open source web CMS as the editorial system, you will save all this cost. you're interested in a, a demo access or something like this, then I can give you my, my card and then be happy to talk to you afterwards and then I think you can make a lot of things possible. Okay, so yeah, thank you for your attention and have a nice evening. Thank you.